Reporting to the media this week at Post-Executive Council Media Briefing is the Secretary of the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, Councillor Nadine Stewart-Phillips. This afternoon I would be speaking particularly to the Department of Culture under the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation. As you are aware, last night signaled, yesterday signaled the end or the close of the Tobago Heritage Festival 2017. This Heritage Festival was celebrated over the last two weeks and we bought the curtain down the curtain down, sorry, last night with a cultural presentation and street parade. Now, over the last two weeks, the festival took us through the length and breadth of Tobago, where we were entertained by dance, drama, music, folklore, and other cultural traditions. And I would like to express how pleased I am overall as the Secretary of the Division of Tourism, Culture, and Transportation with the execution of the Tobago Heritage Festival 2017. I took the opportunity, as a matter of fact, I did not have a choice. I attended every event, day and night. Some I started at 6.30 a.m., 5.30 a.m., well into the night. And the reason for that was, as, it, as my first Tobago Heritage Festival, I wanted to get a first hand of all the presentations, even as we are looking at improvements. And so me being there myself afforded me that opportunity. At this juncture, I would really like to express my sincere thanks to Mr. George Leacock, the chairman of the Tobago Heritage Festival Committee and all committee members. We had a number of subcommittees that worked tirelessly over the two week period. We did start off leading up to the Heritage Festival. There were some hiccups, there were some bumps, but we were able to overcome. And I really want to thank them for their commitment to the process over the past two weeks. And I just want to say we definitely saw we the, the Tobago Heritage Festival, it was under the team Len Hand. And it was very evident because outside of committee members, we saw persons in the cultural fraternity, persons in Tobago, saying, I want to be a part, I want to assist, I want to help in a production. Persons such as Dr. Eastlyn McKenzie, Mrs. Aneth Alfred, we have the likes of Jared Primer, Onika Henry, Alma Gordon. All these persons were very significant and they came forward and they contributed and I am really heartened and I say a big thank you to everyone. I say thank you to Tobago. I say thank you to everyone for your commitment for coming out night after night, even as we look forward to 2018. One of the other significant factors to me coming out of the Tobago Heritage Festival is the number of young persons that were involved in the various productions. Starting off at the Moriah Old Time Wedding, a number of young persons were involved in the procession, Charlottesville, Bonacord. And this signals to us that our culture is in, is in safe hands. Some persons may need training and management, but I can say I'm very pleased with the number of young persons that were a part of the Tobago Heritage Festival. There were a number of changes throughout the season this year. We had the Old Time Carnival, the Pan Focorama, and Calypso being held as one main event in Plymouth. We have the return of the Belly Festival to the Heritage Calendar because in previous years it stood as a standalone event and we brought that back to the Heritage Calendar as a Heritage Festival production. And the past two weeks for me it was very enjoyable and it was a learning experience and as I indicated earlier I took copious notes based on all the productions I would have attended as we seek to improve going forward. I would like to thank 
all the staff at the Department of Culture, the Department of Tourism, the Tobago House of Assembly, all our corporate partners, our sponsors, all committee and subcommittee members and the people of Tobago for coming out in their numbers, all the visitors who journey to the island. We appreciate the support. The quality of the presentations were indeed at a very high standard and this achievement comes on the heels of preparing to celebrate celebrate our 30th anniversary next year. And I just want to mention that we would have received feedback from a number of our sponsors indicating to us that this year's production was indeed a great one and they are looking forward to next year. I, I can't say that that has ever occurred before, but I have in my possession a letter coming from one of our sponsors indicating that they were indeed pleased with the celebration in 2017. And I just want to mention two things in going forward, but before I get to that, we our, the, the, our research department at the department at the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, they undertook a number of surveys visiting some of the major events, Charlottesville, Moriah, and all that information will help us in decision making as we go forward. So when that when that data is compiled, of course, we will make it public so that we we know how many persons attended the events, also a number of persons would have given recommendations as to how we can improve. So in going forward, the, at this time, for the future of the festival, we are going to have a two-day symposium that should be very soon. I cannot commit to a date. And this symposium, would be held to obtain feedback from the communities, from the stakeholders, from the villages that participated on their overview of 2017 and how we can improve again going forward persons in the community because a lot of persons have ideas this is our culture the culture of the Tobago Heritage Festival does not belong to the Tobago House of Assembly it belongs to the people of Tobago and we think that it is integral at this stage that we get feedback from persons as we look forward to celebrating our 30th anniversary one of the other decisions I intend to take as Secretary of the Division is to ensure that we bring all our presentations, all our productions, and make them significant events. So persons look forward to Mariah, persons look forward to Charlottesville, but we want that same enthusiasm for Bon Accord and for every other production so that when the Tobago Heritage Festival comes, uh, comes around, persons must look forward generally to the festival, not just to go in Charlottesville, not just to go in Mariah, to going every single event. So we know there are some forerunners, Mariah, Charlottesville, we have to work to bring all these to bring all the communities and so how i intend to do that is to have our staff at the department of culture throughout the year work with these communities work with these groups so that when the heritage festival season comes around in july persons are not only now struggling to bring a production it would have been ongoing throughout the year so those are the plans that I train currently for the Tobago Heritage Festival. Again, I extend my heartfelt thanks to the committee, all the committee members, subcommittee members, and Tobago for supporting all our visitors that traveled to Tobago. And we look forward to celebrating our 30th anniversary in 2018 with a bang. I move now to the Prime Minister's best village. A couple weeks ago, I was here at post-executive media briefing and I indicated that Tobago is once again back in the Prime Minister's best village after being absent for a number of years. And we will be well represented in this year's best village trophy competition. We have 10 groups from Tobago who have rightfully earned their place in the final round of the, com of the competition. And these groups span throughout the length and breadth of Tobago. We have the Tobago Drama Guild. We have Sisters in Culture, Signal Hill Police Youth Club, Roxborough Village Council, The Master Sky So Tent, Zante, Rhythmic Vibrations, Roxborough Police Youth Club, 
Youth Quake, Bego House of Culture Stars. And these groups will be competing in a variety of categories, such as the Village Chats, Spoken Word, Folk Theater, Folk Song, Calypso Original, Lorraine Rive, Lo Local Interpretive, French Influence, African Dance, Short Story, Calypso Medley, Limbo Dance, and Parang. So we have a number of groups. We, we can say that Tobago will be well represented, and we do look forward to bringing back to Tobago a number of trophies, a number of championships. And I, again, I wish to thank the staff at the Department of Culture and all the groups for their dedication, and we do wish them well as they compete for first place in their respective categories. The final round of the competition runs from the 12th to the 19th of August 2017, and I will be joining the team at some time during that period to lend my support. I move now to speak about Carrie Festa. Now, Carrie Festa has been recognized as the largest gathering in the Caribbean of cultural goods and services and one of the signature Caribbean festivals. The festival presents opportunities to raise awareness of the island as a cultural tourism destination hub and improves the visibility profile of Tobago with all its distinctive features. Every two years, CARICOM countries and its Caribbean affiliates gather to celebrate the spirit of their people through various forms of creative expressions. In 2017, this year, over 23 Caribbean nations will be showcasing a wide array of disciplines, including folk traditions, music, theater, dance, etc., at what I would call the largest gathering of artistic expressions in the Caribbean. Caribbean Carifesta 13, it would be held this year in Barbados during the period the 17th to 27th August. Trinidad and Tobago would be represented at this event and some of our cultural groups have been added to the contingent. So there will be a national contingent and additionally we would be taking additional persons from Tobago outside of this contingent because we are using that as an opportunity to maximize our cultural offerings in Tobago. So we are taking folk singers, limbo dancers, a number of musicians, which falls outside of what the national contingent is taking, dance, etc. Now, Carifesta is a biannual event and it attracts thousands of cultural practitioners and countries throughout the Caribbean. This year, they have added a grand market which gives countries the opportunity to promote and showcase their island to the world. And one of the things I want to mention is that Trinidad and Tobago will be hosting Carifesta in 2019. And I would be joining the Minister of Culture, Dr. Nyan Gatsby Dolly, at the closing ceremony to receive the handing over of the Carifesta baton to Trinidad and Tobago. So I will be joining the delegation to, uh, at the end of Carifesta to ensure that I am there with the minister to accept the baton to host in 2019. Concerning Tobago Heritage Festival, mm -hmm. Um, what would you say were the improvements on the festival from, from this year? And what do you think we can improve on for next year? Okay, thank you for the question. But in terms of improvements for this year, because this is my first year, I cannot speak to previous years. I can only speak based on what was presented this year. As I said, we had a reduction in the budget. I want to mention that first and foremost. And I can assure you that we stayed within the budget and our $7 million included sponsorship, sponsorship also. So I am not sure if that's an improvement, but that's what I can mention as it fell under me. We saw a joining of a number of activities. I spoke about the Pan Fokorama and the Calypso 
competition uh, Juve morning, one of the things that the committee also ensured, because it is old time carnival, the, the, the music played, it reflected years 60s and 70s, right? And moving forward, as I said, this was a learning experience for me. And so I took copious notes of some of the things that transpired. And as I said, coming out of the, a number of the communities and the villages, we need to pay a little more attention to some of the communities and ensure that they are prepared for Tobago Heritage Festival 2018, way in advance and not just two weeks before the start of the festival. I don't know if from whether persons within your division would have gathered information as to the sea bridge and the air bridge issues, how it would have affected mm -hmm. attendance, persons being able to come and attend activities during the festival, heritage festival period. Well, what we did, we, we did do, as I said, you came in a little late, we conducted some surveys and a part of the survey included persons trying to access the ANC bridge. We would also seek to get information from Caribbean Airlines and the Port Authority so that we can determine how many persons actually came. But I can only imagine based on that Based on what was created in Trinidad, coming out of the flash mobs that you all saw, persons would have been intrigued to come, but of course the air and the sea bridge situation, which remains at the forefront of the issues and which of course is being dealt with, and we are hoping that in the near future, the air and sea bridge don't compromise events such as these. I have a number of persons messaging, calling to find out, Patricia, can you help us in terms of getting our payments? We provided services. What is um, the status with regards to payment for service providers of the Tobago Jazz Experience, particularly local service providers? Thank you for the question, Patricia, and I myself have been receiving those calls. It remains a concern. What I can say at this moment is that at the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, we are doing our best. I, I speak to the administrator daily, asking because I'm inquiring, because I myself, I am a human being and I would not want to be in a situation where I provide a service and I am not paid for the service. And so I, I cannot give a timeline as to when all these payments will be made. And so I also have been following social media and persons have been airing their concerns there also. And it, 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 it's heartbreaking to me because as I said, I don't want to provide a service and not be paid. And it's unfortunate and we are dealing with it at the division to ensure that it is resolved in the quickest way possible. Um, if I could ask further, is it that, because you, you told us previously that there was a committee doing some sort of research into the festival's mm -hmm. viability or whatever, is, that, is it that the, the hold up in terms of payment, is it because of what the investigation or the, 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 what's taking place? No, 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 no part. Uh, the, the evaluation of the Jazz Festival Committee, as a matter of fact, what that, that committee, they would help us in our, in our decision going forward. Because in terms of financial management and to ensure that we are not in this situation, should the festival continue, all that is a part of the evaluation process that the, com the task force is currently undertaking, but it has nothing to do with late payments. So what is the real reason for the late payments? Um, real reason? There is no real reason. It's just, it's a process, it's a number of service providers that we have to pay. Artists, persons that provided infrastructural services and all those kind of things. So it's, it's not like a reason, it's just a process and it's taking longer than expected. And I apologize on behalf of the division and we will try to rectify it as soon as possible. Is it that the monies allocated to the jazz festival mm -hmm. Were not exact. Were not in the votes, or was it that the the monies were allocated based on quarterly um, releases from central government? There, there is a vote that di that speaks directly to the jazz festival. But if you understand how money is released from the division of finance, they they don't release all the monies at one time. 
So it, it was based on what would have been received quarterly from the, the Ministry of Finance or but Division of Finance? The Division of Finance. Okay. Yeah. And staying on that same question, I know um, a number of people would say that foreign artists are being paid yeah. and locals are not. And then it comes over as, is it that the Tobago House of Assembly is being biased to foreign artists mm -hmm. than locals? No, it, it's not a matter of being biased. And as I mentioned just before you came in, Liz, the, the evaluation committee would assist us in addressing all these issues because one of the things going forward that I would ensure is that local artists also enter into contractual agreements and contractual arrangements. So if we are at fault, then we are in breach of our contract. Yeah, but with, but with international artists, that is compulsory. You must have a contract with those international artists. I remember the last time you were here, you highlighted that the a and Robinson grave site, it's um, soon to be marked as a historical mm -hmm. site. Any updates on this? When could we expect to um, see this? Well, well, in the new financial year, because it was included in the, for budgeted as a project in the new financial year, but as I said, the conversation has already taken place with the family members because as much as it's our project, they would want to have an input as to what should be expected, what should we see. So the conversation is continuing and it would definitely be in the new financial year. Thank you for tuning in to another Post-Executive Council Media Briefing for the week ending August 5th, 2017.